If you've ever heard of adaptive soundtrack, you've probably also heard that Celeste, some indie mountain climbers knockoff, has a lot of it. The music changes dynamically at certain points in the game to fit what the player is doing. But as a great man once said, anyone can generalize. The fun is in the specifics. Luckily for us, the Celeste sound team has released the official Celeste F mod files containing all sound events and the individual layers for each track, complete with adaptiveness and parameters. The project is also <coughs> fully documented, although it sometimes feels like even the devs realized they made a couple blunders. Let's first establish some basic understanding of what's going on before we begin. Adaptive soundtrack means changing the music in any way depending on the game state. So how would we go about doing that? Oh, I know. Let's have two variations of the same track play in sync but have one muted. Then, using a parameter set by the game, we switch which track is currently playing. This is called vertical adaptiveness. Alternatively, we could have one version play at all times and then only fade in additional instruments when they're necessary. The currently existing terminology is very limited and not really documented anywhere. So allow me to set up the terms exclusive and additive vertical adaptiveness. Or maybe let's just shorten it to additive and exclusive verticality. There, that's better. Another approach you might recognize is horizontal adaptiveness. But we'll take a look at that once we get to Farewell. Okay, enough violating words, let's get to the meat of the video. Title card please. The intro doesn't have much going on. It's just one looping track intro and a one-shot track bridge. Each of them has what's known as a snapshot. In this case, the snapshot fades in the ambient noise at the start and briefly pauses them when the player is in mid-air and the bird appears. At this point, the track just stops until the player makes an input. This is the only time such a stop marker is used in the game. Mmm, consistency. The main track of the city has three adaptive vertical layers that can slowly be toggled by using parameters. These parameters have a seek speed less than infinite, which means they slowly change towards their assigned value, so that if a script changes the value to 1, then that layer only fades in gradually. There is also an end parameter to easily fade out layers 1 and 3 simultaneously. Also worth noting is that when turning off the third layer, there is some reverb, so the last note of the synth that just played can be heard longer. Whenever I don't mention a track that plays in a level, it means that it probably wasn't worth talking about. Take the track Theo, for example. It's just a simple loop, so we won't bother talking about it. Or as another example... Despite what I might have made you think, even with all these cool techniques, most of the tracks have nothing interesting going on. There are no snapshots for ambience and no adaptive soundtrack. Most levels have tracks that are split up, making it appear as if it reacts to the player. Resurrections is a great example. The track before the star block activation and the one after are two different sound events, but a great musical composition helps disguise that fact. If they were in the same event, you might consider them to be horizontally aligned. Same for the scene for meeting with Badalyn and the chase scene right after. Of course, they could have used the same stop parameter as in the prologue, but this is usually the cleaner way of doing it. The track Chase has an escape parameter that adds reverb and quiets down the song. In the game, it increases as the player gets further away from the chase scene. The distance was calculated through code instead of in fmod. I was talking about how in fmod you can set the parameters to slowly reach their real value and in this track it's asymmetrical, meaning if you distance yourself quickly, the track will still quiet down slowly, but if you die, the track reaches its normal volume almost instantly. Going forward, I won't point stuff out anymore. Same goes for the escape parameter, which is used a couple more times in the game. Oh yeah, and the track Awake is also just separate, although it uses the same melody. In total, this level has 6 split tracks that just fit together really well. Even with such a simple implementation, this area manages to be one of my favorites in terms of music. This really shows that sometimes less is more, but sometimes also more is more. So let's look at… The intro track is very basic and is separated from the rest of the level by a cutscene using the Oshiro theme, which is just a simple loop. The Explore track has many additive vertical layers, which this time are separated into different events. It might look weird because it looks like the track loops every few seconds, but that's because each clip is out of sync from the actual playhead. It's functionally identical to doing it synchronized, but the devs apparently hate coherence. But just you wait until we get to the Mirror Temple. It's gonna get spicy. The ambient layer is persistent and doesn't need a perimeter. 
There are two simple vertical parameters for base during platforming and a theremin for Oshiro. The base disappears whenever you talk to Oshiro. Also, in the last part, both parameters are controlled by the distance from Oshiro. Besides those two parameters for the base and theremin, there is also this progress parameter that controls the percussion and melody. What? Why? Why, why, why would you... It seems strange to have both individual layer parameters and a progress parameter, but what do I know? The percussion clip includes the kick, which begs a very important question. How does kick-based sidechaining work when you can't guarantee that both are active at the same time? For those of you who don't know music production, let me explain what I mean. If you have a kick and a bass, and you try to play them at the same time, it will sound quite messy. So the solution is to lower the volume of the bass whenever the kick is playing. This is usually just referred to as sidechaining and it might be the most important technique for clean mixes. FMOD can do this all in real time, just like any music production software, and it works like this. First, the kick needs to be separated from the rest of the drums by using a low pass filter. You could also export the kick separately, but then you'd need to export the same thing twice, so don't do that. The isolated kick is then used as the sidechain input for the bass in an effect called a compressor. This sidechain input can't be heard on its own, so before all of that, we need to duplicate the drum signal into the output channel. It's as simple as that. Funnily enough, the devs went through all this trouble to create a sidechain, but the kick seems too quiet to actually even trigger it, so in the end nothing matters and we're gonna die. But now onto the main course of this video. This one is the most difficult track in the game, so let's ignore the intro for now. Bear with me, it's gonna get tough. It's important to understand unsynced layers. As soon as the playhead reaches an unsynced clip, it doesn't matter where it currently is or where it moves. The clip will keep playing until the playhead leaves its area. Although it sometimes may seem counterintuitive, you must understand that in this example the clips are always playing, so it wouldn't matter where the playhead currently is. This means that we can use the playhead position value for something else. Here there are also four vertical layers as we know them. But their volume isn't controlled by a parameter this time. Instead, it is controlled by the playhead's position. The further the playhead is into the song, the more instruments get added using, for once, exclusive verticality. Now let's go through this once again. The playhead starts right here at clean zero and then makes its way forwards. But once it reaches this blue thing, it is perpetually trapped in an infinite loop. Again, remember that the clips are unsynced, so they will keep playing as normal, indicated by the second, smaller playhead inside the clip. So once the player completes an area, the progress counter goes from 1 to 2. This green zone up here keeps track of that and then sends the playhead over to the next zone titled Clean 1, where the playhead gets stuck again and the process continues twice more. But so far, nothing should have changed, right? Well, let's look at the automation for the second clip. As you can see here, its volume depends on the playhead's position. Once the playhead enters the Clean 1 section, the loop fades in and the first clip fades out. So with this, we have created the same adaptive vertical system we already knew. But why is it so complicated while achieving the same result? This. This little crash sound is the sole reason why they had to reinvent the wheel. The devs didn't want the transition to be so sudden, so they added a crash sound effect, which wouldn't have been possible with just parameters. Also, the transition should only happen on the beat and so should the crash. Both of these things weren't possible with the basic old system, so this is the result. I'd also like to mention that the moving playhead on the beat is quite easy due to a feature called quantization, and it does exactly what you think it does. It waits until the next beat or bar and only then moves the playhead forward, indicated by these green lights dividing the clip. The intro looks quite scary as well, but it's actually the easiest part of this track. It's not a simple intro like before, because the player could always leave the level and return in the middle of the cleaner part of the level. So the music should always be able to start with every possible parameter variation. Because the verticality depends on the player's position, the clips must be offset so as to not play at the same time. These jump markers up in the corner just look at the progress parameter and move the playhead to the according intro section, and these things here just move the player to the appropriate loop zone. The outro is done using the same escape parameter as before, so nothing new there. Oh boy, that sure was difficult, but you got it, right? Yeah, I'm sure you got it, you're a smart boy. So with that out of the way, let's eat dessert. Uh, you know, because earlier I said onto the main code. Whatever, onto the wind level thing. Golden Ridge explain any percent start. The main track is just a simple additive vertical track with three parameters. 
There's one persistent layer and two optional layers, both containing a pad. One sounds a bit more bassy. And one more layer for percussion, which fades in and out very slowly while wind is on screen. This track has surprisingly little going on, both adaptively and in terms of its musical composition. When the wind starts going Super Saiyan, the music simply switches to a different track and time. Ah, finally an easy track. But we all know, that was not the interesting part of Golden Ridge. Here we go, the probably infamous gondola scene. It contains a parameter called calm that everything revolves around. I have mostly been ignoring the details of every automation until now because it's usually just volume and occasionally some reverb, so let's go through every effect and its purpose just at once. As the calm slider decreases and therefore the intensity rises, the volume of the synth increases. For mixing purposes, the volume of the piano also slightly decreases while still remaining audible. That much is obvious. Badeland appearing means synth starts playing. But what isn't so obvious is how bad it would sound if we only alter the volumes. The difference is especially noticeable when the parameter increases. So two more things are affected by the parameter. Firstly, there's an EQ with a low pass and a high pass filter. It gives the feeling of the synths invading every frequency of the previously calm piano, which I think is quite fitting for the scene. Oh, and for the uninitiated, this is what a low pass filter sounds like. And this is what a high pass filter sounds like. Got it? Great. The other value which is affected is some reverb. It's not too noticeable when the parameter decreases, but it makes an enormous difference when the music gets calmer. Also, can I quickly mention the documentation? <clears throat> For the gondola idle parameter, I think we floated it along with the calm parameter to dial back the intensity of the gondola shaking idle. Oh, you think? And no, I'm not going through a billion mixer channels and events to figure out what this does. Maybe some other time. Also, why have two parameters that have the same value? It didn't make no sense. But yeah, that was it for Golden Ridge. Luckily, that didn't take too 11, uh, I mean 12 minutes. Yeah, unfortunately, we'll have to pause the video here. Otherwise, I will have spent way too much time on a single video that only gets like 100 views max. Or even worse, just like all my other projects, I will lose interest before I can finish it. Editing this video is taking a lot of time, and recording the voiceover is even worse, because I am not a native speaker and take 5 attempts per line. I mean, listen to this. Even with such a every effect and it's perfect, that much, that much, that much is obvious. That much, that much is obvious. Given my past projects, it wouldn't be a surprise to scrap something halfway through. I have mentioned turret here, but what about needlessly complicated chess, rhythmizer, electro dash? Motivation on that last game only lasted a week. And just listen to all the songs I've made in the past few years and didn't publish. And don't even get me started on all the scrap videos and scripts. You might think I was just idle because my last upload was a year ago, but you'd be wrong. As much as I would like to share my work, it will still take some time to pull it off consistently. The fact that you're even hearing this means I've made a huge step in actually releasing a high quality video for once. Trust me, there were many attempts before this one. So thank you. Thank you for still being with me after the main video had already ended, and if you could share the video, that would be awesome. But back to Celeste. I think we've reached about the halfway point for the main story, so I'm going to cut the video here. We still have the other half left, as well as the farewell DLC and all of the sound effects if I feel like it. So that's at least two more videos, even more if you want an in-depth analysis of the musical composition itself. Again, motivation is a problem, so if this video does at least half decently, then I will definitely consider making a second part. Also, I have a bunch of other ideas for videos, not just analyses, but there's at least one other game I can think of that has an adaptive soundtrack and published its project files. I'm also a game developer myself, so I will eventually post devlogs too. So be sure to subscribe to not miss that. I promise I will not spam your inbox. But until then, have a good day.